young man, young woman, brothers and sisters in Christ, let me just advise you. One of the richest people in this world, they don't even know the word of God, talk less of faith confession. But they put all the devices that Solomon spoke about in the book of Ecclesiastes. They put it together without reading the Bible. They don't even know there's something called Ecclesiastes. But they happen to, by concubility, they happen to put devices together. Now, you as a child of God, you can make money the same way they have made money, but you must have devices. You must have plans, ideas that Hello viewers, welcome to today's interview. I want to start this interview with uh, a word. If I would have been a pastor, I would have been like this man we're about to interview. He is strong, opinioned, and he's widely read and traveled. Uh, he's a pastor, he's a developer, he's a, an engineer. He's so many things in one. So I want you to meet my pastor, our pastor, Pastor Israel Anashile. Good to meet you, sir. Thank you. Good to meet you, sir. Uh, well, I'll be telling people about you, so I'm so happy to interview you today. Okay. Because uh, we, we are going back. Especially people in this country, they are moving away from Christianity because they were told so many things that they feel is not working. Okay. You understand? So... Uh, but before I start, I would have I'd like to ask you a question, a straightforward question. Okay. What is that thing that made you to change from being a normal Christian and being a, a normal man to becoming this uh, man that everybody look up to and I want to be like? What's that encounter in your life that gave you that difference? I don't know whether you understand. Okay. Okay. Um, in a nutshell. You know, I, I got saved very early um, on campus. And um, the church I got saved in, I won't mention them. Uh, I was told for me to receive baptism of the Holy Spirit, I need to be sanctified. And so I'm asking, how do I know when I'm sanctified? Then I was told my house group leader would tell me. You will know when I'm sanctified. As a young Christian, I searched my Bible. I couldn't find anything like that. Then I attended fellowship on campus, a Pentecostal fellowship. And then I picked the book written by uh, Reverend Paul Ginodu, How to Receive Baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's different from what I was told in church. I told us in the book, you can receive by laying on of hands, or by fasting and prayer. Well, since my church won't lay hands on me, I, I decided to fast and pray. I took a three days fast. And on the third day, uh, the morning devotion at home, the house was not born again, but we were religious in our home. And uh, my dad said, Israel, you are praying for us today. The only words of English I spoke was in Jesus' name. Wow. Everything else I was speaking in tongues. Mm. So I realized that the, uh, from that moment I said, God is not as difficult as people <laughs> made him to it's be. True, it's true. I received baptism of the Holy Spirit. The book said, if you are genuinely born again, mm. God longs to hear your voice. Ask him. And that Jesus has said, God will answer everyone who asks. I simply asked and I received. Mm. So I began to wonder where did that doctrine come from mm. in the church I was attending that says somebody must satisfy you. You must be satisfied, sanctified. So somebody has to determine I am sanctified. Then they lay hands on me. It's not in the Bible. Cornelius received baptism of the Holy Spirit while Peter was still preaching. preaching. 
So later I discovered that I need to read the Bible by mm. myself. So that's what made the difference in my life. Reading the Bible by yourself. So because you know uh, so many people don't read the Bible by themselves and they have jumped in so many in so many beliefs. Yes. And it, it, it seems when they try it and it's not working, they blame it on Jesus. And some people say Jesus is not working, Christianity is a scam. And that's why I'm, I'm interviewing you today because he, 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 there is one that I want us to address today. And that one is positive confession. So is positive com confession a scam? And if it is not, where did we mix it? Let me give you a, a little okay. background of what I'm saying. We grew up in Nigeria church believing that if you see a car pass and you like the car, you go and touch the car and say, I receive it in Jesus' name. This is my car. I believe it. I have a boy that worked with me as a, as a staff. He will come to me and say, sir, he, he, he say, I'm rich. I said, if you're rich, God bless you. You can go. Oh, now I'm rich. He said, he's trying to tell me that he doesn't have transport. Okay. Okay. So, I see in, what in confession now, is now making you feel that the way you confess negative. So, there are so many things around. But the first question is, is this positive confession scam? If it is not, where did you think we miss it? Okay. Well, I won't use the word scam. There is nothing wrong in confessing positively. But I think the church has taken it too far. Okay. That's my experience. We were told, point to it, claim it, fate it, it's yours, it's coming. We would see a beautiful BMW on the road. Say, I claim this car in the name of Jesus, I receive it. I, I can't even remember where that doctrine came from. But we were going around claiming things, but none of those cars came. Mm. I discovered by the reason of understanding of the Bible, that that is not the way God wanted things to be done. Mm. When Jesus was hungry, he didn't say, be filled. They went to buy food. The disciples went to buy food, remember, mm -hmm. in John chapter 4? By the time they came back, they found him talking to the woman by the well. Mm. At least we have the record. They went to buy food. And they went the Bible says they went to another city so, to buy the food. Why go through that trouble when you can have said, be filled in Jesus' name? So I, I realize that the plan of God is not for us to just point to anything and claim it. Yes, we are supposed to speak positively. The Bible says in the book of Philippians that anything that is of good report, if there be virtues in it, we should meditate on them, ponder and think on them. Yes, I want to think positively. I want to meditate on good things. But it is not wise. It's not a sin, let me put it like that. If I am poor in my pocket, I know that that is not the reality. Mm. The reality is that my God shall supply my need. That's the reality. But at the moment, my pocket is empty. So me saying, I'm loaded, will not put money in my pocket. Mm. My understanding and my belief is what will put money in my pocket. My God shall supply all my needs. And so when I want to meet you, I will tell you my situation because God may use you. Mm -hmm. my, my brother, I, I may be low on cash. I don't know if you can be of help or you can point me in the direction of a good job. You, if I speak, you might go. I remember when I was, uh, when I just moved to England. Mm. I, I, I've been born again before I went to England and I was at home. My friend would go to work and I told them, guys, I need work. I, I didn't come to London to watch television, you know. <laughs> and, um, he just came home around uh, 10 o'clock. He came back. He said, Israel, get up. They're interviewing people at our workplace today. Mm. I went with him. I got a job that day. Wow. Started work that day. Wow. I didn't get the job by saying, 
I have a job. Mm. I have a job. I woke up in the morning, made my request known to God. Father, I need income. The little cash I brought to England is fast running out. I need income. I thank you, I've received it. You see, that's where the faith comes mm, in. Okay. I thank you, I've received it. Why am I thanking him? Because he has heard me. Jesus said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me, that you hear me always. But he didn't say, I thank you, Lazarus has arisen. Mm. He said, I thank you, you, you hear me, me always. always. Then he spoke. He said, comfort. You see, so if I want job, I won't say, I have job. I said, I speak to God. I say, Father, I thank you because you have heard me. A new job is on the way. So if you see me, my positive confession is job is on the way. Mm. That's my positive confession. But while I'm saying to you job is on the way, if there's no money yet in my pocket, I'm not going to say to you I'm rich. Because that's not what brings the money. Mm. It is the prayer that I pray that, mm. that will bring the job or the income or the support that you need. And some people think, oh, because I have prayed, if I now say to a friend, I am poor in my pocket, I have cancelled my prayer. Brain. That's foolishness. <laughs> it's, I read that. It's I read foolishness. That. Because the, the, the Lord you are dealing with is not subjecting it to, oh, oh, angel, what did he say? He said, it's poor. Okay, don't, don't answer that prayer anymore. God doesn't work like that. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Mm. So, my belief is, make your request known. Be positive-minded, it's coming. And when you tell somebody, oh, I have a headache, it will not negate your prayer. Your prayer. I've been saying for almost 40 years, and what I'm telling you has always worked for me. Mm. I remember when I said, I told one of my uh, pastors and the, the elders, I said, ah, I have this terrible headache. My head is pounding. And they said, why are you confessing <laughs> negative? That is, that's what I, that's the typical so I said, it's not negative. I'm confessing fact. Reality is what God has done. Mm. He has healed me by the stripes of Jesus. That's the reality. Mm. That's the truth. But fact is that, is that right now, I have this pounding headache. I said to him, what shall we do about it? If I say to you, my head is fine, you guys will go around doing what you're doing. <laughs> but if I say to you, I have this pounding headache, then you should know what to do. The Bible says the elders should pray for mm -hmm. him. <laughs> you understand? And the, prayer, and the prayer of faith will heal the sick. sick. So my confession is not negative. Mm -hmm. I'm just speaking fact. So you cannot use truth to surmount the fact. Mm -hmm. That's how it's supposed to be. So reality and facts. Reality is what Christ has done. Yes. The fact is what is happening. What is happening yes. immediately. Thank you so much, sir. You're welcome. I, I have a, a, a short story to tell you because okay. as a young man, I've been analyzing this thing because I, I have two sisters that stay in a poor area. They want to relocate to a better area. Okay. So the other one is loud, confessing, I don't belong here. This is not my place. This is not my thing. Do you understand? The other one doesn't like the place because I, I, they are my choir members I, the choir leader. so uh, what happened was the other one was saving money okay. while the other one is confessing okay. so at the end of the day the other one moved the one that wasn't confessing that wasn't confessing while the one that is confessing is still there hmm. so that is where it brought, that brought me about this question yes. about faith and work that is a faith with the work is dead. Yes. And I want to ask, is work without faith dead? <laughs> because I, I want us to bring it to perspective. Okay. Because I like that. The, the 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 this thing is what so many people is running with. I'm confessing positive. In my family, you can't say you are sick. My mother is so sure that you can never say it. Even if you even say my say mom, I'm not for me, but say stop confessing negative. So <laughs> I've, I've met her. <laughs> so, I want us to, to bring it into perspective. The place of work and the place of faith. And is this faith must still be 
talking and talking or is it something that has to do with hearts so my question is faith without work is dead but is work without faith okay very good question when the bible says faith without works is dead the bible is talking about a corresponding action mm -hmm. that goes with what you claim you believe what you claim you believe yes faith what's faith believing that God is able to do what he has promised. The Bible says, Abraham, being not weak in faith, but believe that he who has promised is able to perform it. That's, that's the definition of faith. It's called father of faith. Mm -hmm. So if faith is having a strong conviction that God is able to do, what he claims he will do, faith then is that knowledge, your conviction in that knowledge. That's faith. Okay. But that faith in itself, which is conviction, the Bible says Abraham being fully convinced, that's faith. Conviction in that promise, okay. in that knowledge of God said he will, that's faith. But that conviction, which is faith, on its own, will not bring anything your way mm -hmm. until you even pray. Okay. So work in that sense is first pray. Mm. You can say prayer. you can say by his stripes the Bible say I'm healed, so I can't be sick. No, when you are sick, it doesn't change your faith. Your faith is conviction that the stripes of Jesus heals. That's your faith. Now apply the faith. That's why James called it a prayer of faith will heal the sick. He didn't say faith will heal the sick. Faith on its own can't heal the sick. Mm. No, that's not what the Bible says. Faith on its own is conviction God can. That's faith. But prayer of faith, that's now the works. The prayer that the works you do with the faith you have in this moment is to pray. The person who needs something, who has also prayed, I say to you, there's still work to be done. For example, you cannot have somebody bring food for you mm -hmm. because you have prayed. So food has now come. You can't look at the food and say, I'm filled. I am filled. Oh, my tummy is filled. I don't think anybody needs to advise you. You need to move closer to that table, pick the spoon, and, and put the food in your mouth. Why didn't? Why did you walk? So you see, we have common sense that tells us certain things. Paul wrote to third of the New Testament, mm -hmm. and the man who wrote to third of the New Testament, the man who wrote most of the things that we prophesy and confess my God shall supply my need. The man didn't sit like the sister you told in one place. You understand? He knows that God backs up your faith that is accompanied with works. He says, my God shall supply your need. If God will supply your need and you will claim what the man says, but you are watching the man who made what you are claiming he is working it is utter foolishness on your part to be claiming what another man said and the man is working mm. it's like a man that says to you oh the road is, is safe and the man is running this direction concability should tell you sir is there any reason you are no, running this way, way this way <laughs> okay Somebody says to you, the road is fine and it's running this way. Ask a question. Somebody says to you, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory. But the man says, I have shown you by walking. He was a tent maker. When he arrived in a city, he used his wisdom. He saw some Jews who were tent makers. Mm. Oh, he said, well, I have learned this trade. He went to them, Aquila mm. and Priscilla. He went to join them. Say, oh, I'm a Jew like you. I'm a believer. 
like you, and I'm also a tent maker. The man did not, he came to preach in that city. He came to preach. Oh, oh no, Paul has no other mission. Jesus told him from the time of his conversion, I am sending you to the Gentiles. He has no other mission. Say, whoa, before me if I do not preach the gospel. That's the only thing this man would do. Mm. When he got to that town that he wants to preach, he knew he has to eat. He could have said, God sent me here. Food is coming. And he will be looking out for who will bring food. No. He did the first thing. Joined himself to a trade. Walked with his hand. And God met his need through the work of his hand. The Bible says, God shall bless whatever you lay your oh, hands yes. upon. That is what we put the faith on. Faith is conviction. He will do what he promised. What did he say he will do? I will bless whatever you yeah, lay your hands, hands upon. upon. So if you keep saying, I am moving out of this environment. This environment is too poor for me. I don't be fit. I'm a princess. I'm a child of the king. I'm not living here. Oh boy, you will live there oh. Because that faith is not buttressing and boosting anything. Mm. Faith is what catapults your work. Mm. Faith is what catapults your work. Yes, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding, which means you must have understanding. Lean not on your own devices, which means you must have devices. The Bible says in the book of the Exercises, CS, he says, CS thou a man. If you are not, sorry, book of Proverbs, if you are not diligent in your way, what's God going to bless? Mm. Faith is the booster of that diligent yes. work. God looked at us in advance. God looked at this generation in advance. God looked at this, our Pentecostal environment in advance. And in Proverbs 6 said, go to the ants. And learn God. because he knew we we're going to sit down and say, My God shall supply all my needs. I hope that answers it. It answers it very well. It answers it very God bless you, sir. I, I want to ask, okay. Um, I noticed that if two people, like say two young men, one will be saying, I want to be a doctor, I, I, I am a doctor, I claim doctor. The other one is not saying it. But let's say he's believing it. And both of them, by God's grace, passed into university. The one that is saying and claiming could not measure up with the works, which is attending classes, being a, passing your exam, doing other things. Why the other one that is not loud about saying it was able to endure the the, the works that's the process. Course, yes. You see at the end that the one that is not saying it will become a doctor. Why the person that is saying it and is not able to add works might not become a doctor. What am I what am I saying is you say something that faith is the boost. So if the faith is not adding to the boost that there, there is a problem. So, I want to ask a simple question. Okay. In your walks of life, what have been able to help you to endure the process? Because it is, it, it, what I'm saying, after you have suffered for a while, I will elevate you or something. So, uh, what have made you to pass through your own process when things are hard, when you are going through a process to be able to come up to this level? That's my question. Okay. Well, it, it's very simple. If the Bible says, he that does not walk should not be fed. Should not. It's the word of God. Written by Holy Spirit. Every scripture is by the Holy Spirit. He that does not walk should not be fed. If that's the word of God, I have to walk. He that does not provide for his household should be regarded as an unbeliever. As unbeliever. It means I have to provide for my household, not God. 
The Bible did not say God will provide for my household. The mm -hmm. Bible says I should provide for my household. So when you say we are believing God, we should be believing God that my work will prosper. Mm -hmm. Not just to sit down. So go back to that education now. My faith is to believe God I have understanding more than my teachers. Mm. When I read this book, I will get it. I, I went to university. There are some courses that were tough for me. I will pray. And some favors that I have found is, oh, they're going to ask three questions and I have seven topics to read. Holy Spirit, help me. And somehow, somehow, it would guide me, not that I hear a voice, but somehow, somehow, how it does it, I don't know, but I'm reading and I'm like, ah, this, this topic is too difficult. Uh, you know what? Let me go to the next one. Then I found one that I know. I read it very well. I read it deeper. I say, okay, I have one. Lord, I'm hoping if they don't ask this question, there will be trouble. <laughs> I read three out of seven by faith and prayer. I read three. When I entered the exam hall, two out of the three came out. Wow. Well, I'm only supposed to answer three. So I answered the two very well. It can only remind you what you have put inside. So while I was also writing, it was helping me, quickening me, bringing them to my forefront and I was writing, writing, writing I won't lie to you, the third one I have no clue I just look at the question well, these little things I remember in the classroom I wrote when they marked it, I passed wow. it was supposed to be 20, 20, 20 marks but I had gotten 15 and uh, 18 from the two <laughs> marks they gave me 3, the other one, so I passed I don't know if you you're, yeah. so, but I read. I prayed to read. I read very well. I prayed for direction. And when I got to the exam hall, I was able to use what I have read by the help of the Holy Spirit, Spirit. quickening me. So yes, we yeah. have to put in the hard work. The hard work. And the Holy work. Spirit will, will help us. So there is one of your messages I was listening to and it captivated me. Uh, because uh, over the years, people, I, I wanted to ask in your work, you started as a as a computer engineer, engineer, then you entered into construction. I want to ask you a question: How do you know when it's time? Okay, let me tell the story to the audience so okay. that they can understand. <laughs> so I I was listening to Pastor. Pastor said he started as a computer engineer. The Holy Spirit gave him an inspiration and somebody was building kitchen and said you should help her. So you brought somebody and the person was not doing it right. So I think something like that. Then from there you became a constructor, um, an engineer, then you became a developer. But my question is, when do you know it is time to change your works? The Bible says, whatsoever your hands find to do. Do it with your all. When I was a computer engineer, that was what my hands found to do. I read it very well. I was working for, I don't know if you know Dell. Mm. Yeah, I don't know whether they still make Dell these days. <laughs> I was working for Dell Computers in, in London uh, as a support engineer. He pays the bill. But I wanted more. Remember, whatsoever you find Ants find to do. That's all I had. That's all my ants could find. So I was doing it diligently. And then I, you know, needed to build a new kitchen and invited a guy to do it. I, it was during my holiday, so I was with him. I enjoyed what I saw. I, I liked it. I participated. I put my hand into it. Somebody came and loved my kitchen. He says, Oh, I like your kitchen. Ah, uh, I would like to do something like this. Because I participated, I said, I can build your kitchen. Are you sure? I said, yes. 
the, the lady gave me the contract to build the kitchen. So I went to call the original guy that did it because I'm still a trainee. Mm -hmm. I said, there's a contract. Me and you, we will do this kitchen together. Okay. And um, I will still continue to be your journeyman and so on and so forth. So we took the job. But as God will have it, I gained more experience because now it's a contract. Mm. I had to apply. I was cutting wood. I was doing this, doing that, applying the glue. Everything the man was telling me to do. He wanted me to hands on. And when the lady came, she met me physically doing it. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody loved the kitchen and said, oh no, the same lady now said, can you do an extension of my BQ. I said, yes, I can. Obviously, this is no longer kitchen. I went to look for a bricklayer and um, few. We, we came together as a team. But obviously, this time around, I know it's no longer child's play. I had to go online and read and read. Before the contract started, I had done two weeks course online <laughs> on construction. Wow. But cash course. So by the time the bricklayers were working, I was already speaking. One guy came to check me on site. He's an architect. He said, Israel, it's like you have flair for this thing. The Bible says that the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. When they say you have flair for this thing, you, you can go into this. I believe God used him. So how do you know? You will just know because somehow God will orchestrate things. You will just say, you feel. The Bible says you will hear a voice behind you saying this is the way. Mm. Go into it. The voice may not be my son, my son. The important thing is to hear it. And what did I hear? I hear an architect friend who said, this way it's like you have flair. He saw me the way I was directing the brick. I said, you have flair for this thing. Why don't you go into this thing? That was how I now decided to go and do a conversion course. Construction. Wow. And I went to it full-time. I was doing part-time, computer, full-time. Then I was making more money into construction, so I gave up computing. And long story short, from there, I started building houses because I have my certificate now and started building mini estates in England and then moved to Nigeria to do the same thing I've been doing. Mm. That's so nice. Uh, that's so nice. Uh, there is this uh, message I was listening to. Somebody said your thoughts brings your your word and your word that's your voice controls your action and your action controls your destiny. Your thoughts controls your word. Your word controls your action and your action controls your destiny. I, I, I wanted to ask a question. Uh, the place of talking of word especially uh, the way we do it in Pentecost is it a must? I don't know how to explain it to you now uh, you are loud you, God gives you a vision and you are, you are speaking and speaking and speaking is it a must? or can you go from believing it to action, or must he convert to words? Is converting it to words is he a must? That's a because so many people feel that Christians are loud, and it's because of this talking it, talking it by faith, talking it by faith, which is good, but must it be like that? I don't know how to explain it to you, sir. When you talk and talk and talk, especially in your own home. You are quickening yourself. In your home. In your home. Okay. For example, the Bible says, He that speaketh in tongues edifies himself. Jude says, Building up yourself. Praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit, praying in the spirit is not for people, it's for me. I'm building myself when I'm praying in the Holy Spirit. I'm edifying myself. So, Corinthians saying the same thing. Jude is saying the same thing. When you speak in tongue, you edify yourself. The same thing with faith talk. Faith talks 
which we call confession. It's not for the purpose of that confession is what will bring the reality. As I confess, I am above, I am not below. I am a divine, my spirit man. So it's supposed to be within you, not it's, it's for the public. For, no, it's for me. Okay. The Bible says, and David stared himself. The staring of yourself is for your own spirit, man. You understand? Mm. Of course, when he met the Philistine, he said, you this Philistine, I will feed your head. To the... He wasn't doing positive confession. He was actually saying what he believed God is going to do. Mm. It is not the saying of David that now did it. David was saying it because he believed God is going to do it. So if I say to you, I am going to be a billionaire, I am not confessing and with that confession to become a billionaire. I am confessing I have seen from the word of God. I have seen what grace can do. I have seen what blessing will do. I have seen what hard work will do. I have seen what diligence will do. I now know if I combine all of this, I can make it. I am going to be a billionaire. Wow. So that wow. con that confession is coming from somewhere. Somewhere. It's not that I, I just say, I'm a billionaire. My brother, I'm going to be a billionaire. Trust me, I'm going to be a billionaire. That is, I, 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 it's incantation. <laughs> it sounds like incantation. <laughs> but a real confession is for you. I'm in my room. I'm pacing off and down. I am rich. I'm above only. Mm. I refuse to settle for defeat. Mm. I say no to defeat in the name of Jesus. I'm charging my Your spirit. spirit. Man. So mm. when I go out there and I meet obstacles, I have told myself, I refuse to fail. Mm. So when somebody is telling me no, I'm looking at this situation. What is this I'm saying? No? You, you, you understand? I, I go to a corner I go and pray again, Father, I reject this no. I reject this refusal. Do something about it. I come back and say, my brother, let us look at this figure again. And God intervenes and they give me a yes. I, I, it is not my I, confession that did it. My confession has built me that has I am not you. taking no for an answer. Yeah. So you, you just see the point. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's getting clearer. It's getting clearer. So, when uh, we hear men of God say, like, you hear somebody say, I cannot be poor. It's not for you to go and copy it. It's the person is speaking from, from his own, from what he's standing on. Yeah, wealth of knowledge. I cannot be poor. I, I, I always say to people, I can never be broke. I am not conf doing a positive confession. I can never be broke. That's just the truth today i can never be broke. why i understood i understood i understood those five things mm. i know the place yes. of blessing the place of grace the place of wisdom the place of hard work the place of resilience and all those things i know that when i put all those principles that together, it must work practical wisdom so when you work with devices you sit down you look analyze and yes it makes sense you add grace to it blessing comes upon it blessing is that amplifier of that which you have worked out mm. if you have not worked it out you don't have devices what's blessing going to boost nobody told isaac how to plant angels didn't do the planting of the beans and rice or whatever grain isaac planted bible say isaac planted and God blessed it. If I say left the grains in the kitchen, it will remain a grain. <laughs> it's just wow. That's the word of God. Ah, yeah. Wow, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So the confession should start from your inner self, and it's supposed to be built on something. Yes, because I have some people, uh, some some musicians will tell me, "Don't worry, I will blow." I will, I, will, I will be popular. I will just look at him and say, does he know the... Does this guy know what it takes? The, the, what, is, what you will stand on? 
You know, if you know what I'm getting from what you say, if you know all the ingredients that you stand yes, on, yes. you can say it with conviction, not just a word of mouth. In fact, let me can I add this? Please, sir. You mentioned an artist. You know how to write the song. You have a good voice. You have done your voice training. You can hit the note. But you also know there's something called a hook. Mm -hmm. So the song you write, does it have a hook? Does it have a melody that can stay in the brain? That when somebody hears it, he wants to hear it again. All those ingredients is what makes a blow. You can write a good song. But it's not a blow. The, the promotion, the all those, all those factors must be. Put when you figure it. them out, and you, 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 from the spirit, you now say, I, I, will, I, I must blow. Yes. Uh -huh. Can I now say this? When you figure it all out, then you lock your door. Okay. In your bedroom. Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. understanding. You have not gotten the understanding. In all your ways, are the one that makes way where there is no way. Mm. Let it be as I release this project. Hindrances are removed. Where the doors are shut, you flung them open. Mm. That's where God comes in. So that we're not resting on our I have written a, a very good song, it will blow. Mm. We must lean on God. Wow. So finally you must lean on God. Okay. That's, that's a great one, sir. So I, I want you to uh, advise any young man watching us now that has been, at least I have learned so many things from you today, that stretches, uh, that stretches my belief. Number one, I have learned the difference between the reality and the fact. The reality is what God has done, what Christ did on the cross. The fact is what is happening now. Yeah, I have learned so many things. But I want you to speak to any young man looking at us and listening to us. Because uh, in 2015, I, I, I had a word that changed my life. You understand? And I believe that this our interview and discussion will change somebody's life. A final word to somebody listening to us that is believing only on confession and that is not putting other factors together. I want you to speak to the person and give him a word. Okay. All right. Young man, young woman, brothers and sisters in Christ, let me just advise you. One of the richest people in this world, they don't even know the word of God, talk less of faith confession. But they put all the devices that Solomon spoke about in the book of Ecclesiastes. They put it together without reading the Bible. They don't even know there's something called Ecclesiastes. But they happen to, by concubility, they happen to put devices together. Now, you as a child of God, you can make money the same way they have made money, but you must have devices. You must have plans, ideas that works. Not just idea, idea that you can sit down, put into plans, and say, yes, if I put this on top of this, this is what I will achieve. Then on top of having devices like them, they don't pray. They just make sure the devices make sense. Don't go and form a device that does not make sense because they don't have God. But they have common sense. That they, because God built that common sense in every human being he made. He released rain both on you and the unbeliever. And the unbeliever used the same rain that God gave to harvest it for his uh, farm business. And you are uh, using the rain only to gather water to put in your jerry can. That's all you do with rain. It's the same provision that the unbeliever received from God that you receive from God, but he used the, uh, the, the resources uh, with devices. So my advice is, even without prayer, even without faith confession, God has given us common sense, wisdom, like unbelievers and believers alike. Resources are available to unbelievers and to believers alike. 
but you have something even extra. Mm -hmm. I will show you hidden riches in secret places. They don't pray. They with toiling and everything, they figured it out. I was told Elon Musk sleeps three hours, four hours a day when he was researching. Mm. But you sleep 16 hours out of 24. And the remaining eight hours, you spend it at night vigil. <laughs> when are you going to plan your devices? Mm. Faith without works is dead. Thank you so much, sir. I, I, I am blessed. I am blessed. I know you are blessed too. Thank you so much, Pastor. Uh, this uh, I, I pray we'll be getting more of your time like this so that we can be able to start straightening things. Because uh, many of my, my brothers in, uh, in my town, all of them are going back to shrine. They say Christianity is not working. But it's because they weren't taught well. They weren't taught well. So I believe by this our interview that God will use it to bless your spirit. I know you are blessed. I know you are blessed. Pastor, you say a word of prayer for us before we go. Amen. Father, we thank you. Your word has gone forth. Wisdom has gone forth. I pray that you will quicken it in the mind of the hearers. And Lord, the Holy Spirit will brood on it and their lives will be transformed. Lord, we will no longer be foolish, but we will be wise. And we will see results. And that result, I pray, will bring more souls to the kingdom so that people don't go around saying, Christianity doesn't work. Do it for them, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.